The capital city of the Gambia is facing a serious threat of being completely eaten by the mighty strength of the encroaching Atlantic Ocean and the ever-growing dominance of the force of the mighty river Gambia. Banjul is situated right on the edge of these two high water forces, making it very vulnerable to high tide and erratic sand and mud-tearing water waves. Because of this, Banjul is expected to lose 50% of its landmass to these mighty waters. But are there any hopes of saving Banjul? Well, let's explore what the experts think. Let's dive right in. Banjul, the capital of the Gambia, is facing significant coastal erosion in the hands of the combined forces of the Atlantic Ocean and the River Gambia. This erosion has become a pressing concern as it threatens the very existence of the tiny city. The geographical position of Banjul, situated on St. Mary's Island at the mouth of the River Gambia where it meets the Atlantic Ocean, makes it particularly vulnerable to the relentless forces of water. Over the years, this unique location has subjected Banjul to both tidal actions from the ocean and the river's flow, accelerating the rate of coastal erosion. The city of Banjul is very important not just because it is the capital city of the Gambia. It is also a bustling cosmopolitan metropolis widely known for being the Gambia's business district. The city houses key establishments like the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital which is the main referral hospital in the Gambia, the National Assembly, lots of businesses, the Port of Banjul, Albert Market, one of the largest markets in the Gambia, home of the president and many more. So, this city is highly important to the Gambian people and it will be a big blow to see it vanish and eaten by the ocean together with Kunta Kinte Island, which attracts tens of thousands of tourists each year. But first, to better understand this and make complete sense out of the scale of what's happening, let's look at the River Gambia through which the location of the city of Banjul will become apparent. The River Gambia is the only river in Western Africa that provides easy access to the ocean. This 1,120-kilometer or 700-mile-long river begins in Guinea and flows westward through the Gambia into the Atlantic Ocean. In other words, it starts from Banjul, the capital city and the North Bank region of the Gambia, to the Upper River region of the Gambia. Looking at the River Gambia, it is divided into three parts, the wider section which is closer to the river's mouth, where it widens and interacts with tidal forces, and stronger dynamic waves from the Atlantic Ocean. Then you have the middle section with a bit smaller waterways than the wider section which contains strong waves as well, but not as strong as the wider section of the river which opens onto the North Atlantic Ocean. So you have the wider section, the middle section, and then you have the lower section which is narrower and more channelized with waves being more generally smaller and less powerful. The flow speed in these areas is influenced more by the river's gradient and volume of water rather than tidal effects. The River Gambia is generally regarded as a calm river, however, it has the tendency of becoming a fast-running river with much stronger currents. This can also be as a result of seasonal variations. These are the three sections of the River Gambia, and looking at the city of Banjul, it is located along the wider section of the River Gambia, right at the mouth where the river meets the North Atlantic Ocean. This brings significant challenges for Banjul. During the dry season, which is roughly from November to May, the flow of the River Gambia is relatively lower due to reduced rainfall. The water level is more stable, and the waves tend to be smaller and less powerful. In this period, the river's flow speed typically ranges from 0.5 to 1.5 meters per second, and wave heights are generally modest, usually less than 0.5 meters. However, during the rainy season, which is from June to around October, this is when things take a surprise turn. The rainy season brings heavy rainfall, which significantly increases the river's discharge. The increased volume of water causes the river to flow faster and with greater force, especially along the wider section of the river. During this period, the flow speed can exceed 2 meters per second, and wave heights can increase due to the higher water levels and stronger currents. In flood-prone areas, waves can become quite turbulent and much more stronger, especially in the wider section of the river where Banjul is located. During the dry season when the water levels are at a lower and more calmer nature, the coastal damage to Banjul is a lot more mild compared to the raining season, where tidal flows and water levels go berserk on Banjul. During this time along the Banjul coastline, the Atlantic Ocean experiences several significant changes in tides, water volume, and wind patterns. The tides are influenced by increased rainfall and river discharge into the ocean. This influx of freshwater can alter the tidal patterns, sometimes increasing the tidal range. Additionally, local wind patterns play a crucial role. 
onshore winds, which are more common during the rainy season, can push water towards the shore, increasing sea levels and potentially leading to higher tides and the formation of large waves which tear up the bottom of the coastline and move huge amounts of sand and mud offshore, as reported by both the World Climate Guide and the National Ocean Service. This is the same thing happening to other side of Banjul along the Bourne Road area, and a couple of kilometers behind which are being eroded by the force of the River Gambia. The strong waves produced by the high water levels of the River Gambia during the raining season eat up more sand and mud surfaces along the south of Banjul. Banjul is succumbing to these two water forces as erosion accelerates. Global warming is equally a culprit. As global temperatures increase, polar ice caps melt, causing sea levels to rise. Banjul's low-lying coastal areas are especially susceptible to this phenomenon. Higher sea levels mean that the ocean encroaches further inland during high tides and storm surges, eroding the shoreline and washing away valuable land. This not only reduces the land area but also undermines infrastructure such as roads, buildings and seawalls that are crucial for the city's functioning and protection. In this manner, the city of Banjul slowly fades away before our own eyes because, as it stands, the government is doing practically nothing to salvage the situation. This is a humble request to please support our work by liking this video and subscribing to the African Pacific YouTube channel, a Gambian-owned channel looking into the pressing issues of the motherland that often ignored by mainstream media. Please, show your support by liking and subscribing. Thank you so much. Reports indicate that Banjul loses approximately 1 to 2 meters of its coastline annually to the sea. This ongoing erosion threatens not only the city's geography, but also its infrastructure and the livelihoods of its residents as per the National Ocean Service. The United Nations Environment Program UNEP, has highlighted the severity of the situation, estimating that up to 60% of Banjul's land could be submerged by 2100 if current trends continue. The capital, which sits on a low-lying island at the mouth of the Gambia River, is particularly vulnerable to rising sea levels. Moreover, the economic implications of coastal erosion in Banjul are profound. The port of Banjul, a crucial hub for the nation's trade and economic activities, is at significant risk. According to a World Bank report, the potential damage to the port and other critical infrastructure could cost the Gambia up to 11% of its GDP by 2050. This economic strain is compounded by the displacement of communities which could exacerbate poverty. This is a polite reminder to please like this video and subscribe to the African Pacific YouTube channel, thank you so much. In conclusion, the Gambian government and African governments by extension have a very bad attitude of not taking problems seriously by not doing something to help the situation, unless it is completely broken. As the ocean and the river Gambia eats away the city of Banjul, the Gambian government will do nothing about it until after a significant portion of valuable land is lost. This is the end of this video. Please share your thoughts below on what you think about this issue. Thanks for watching and stay safe.